Hello. So a few months ago, I covered this issue whereby if you open a MacBook Pro screen all the way over and over and over again, eventually it will stop working altogether. And this is a really interesting issue because you don't have to get liquid on it. You don't have to smack it. You don't have to abuse it. You don't have to put it in your back pocket or purposely bend it. Just over the course of normal usage, the machine will stop working. And I can demonstrate that by using this video from flexgate.me here, which is going to show up in a moment. Yes, this is a YouTube video inside a YouTube video, nothing but professionalism from our social media. So as you can see, there, is, there are these little stage light effects the, that are coming up, these little black bars from the bottom of the screen, and as you open the screen all the way, it will stop working altogether. Now, this is one of many issues with this machine, and iFixit has done an excellent blog post where they go over what causes this, which is one of the LCD flex cables that is soldered to the LCD itself, I repeat, soldered onto the LCD assembly, is a little bit too short. Now, if you go to an Apple store and you talk to a genius and you say, is this a known design defect? Is this a known flaw? They will read something from a script and they'll tell you, no, it is not a design defect, no. It is not a flaw. I'm sorry you're experiencing issues with this. They will never use certain words like flaw, issue, uh, glitch, nothing like that. But they will tell you all of these things, while simul and they'll tell you that there's no problem. However, if you take a look at this picture that iFixit did a very good job on, you'll notice that in the 2018 model display assembly, even though it uses the same chassis, even though it uses the same logic board form factor and display form factor, they have extended the display cable. So see, this is the 2016 display cable, it's shorter, and this is the 2018 display cable, which is longer. So they're going to tell you, no, there is no known issue with this. No, I'm sorry, you have to pay us $500 to $800 to get all this fixed, even though you didn't do anything wrong to it. It's not a design flaw, but they're going to design it differently, effectively gaslighting you into believing that this is something that you did or that you just must be making it up if you think there's a problem. This would be similar to me beating my wife, telling everybody, no, of course I don't beat her. And then when everybody leaves the room, I touch up the makeup on her face that covers all the bruises. This is nonsense. And this is only one of many issues on this new machine. They denied for quite a long time that there were issues with the keyboard over here. And they, I remember they released this one piece on how to clean your keyboard. Oh, this was so funny. They were going over how to clean the keyboard if you're having this issue, implying that the reason that this is not working is because you haven't used compressed air properly to remove the junk from your keyboard. And then they went, oh yeah, our bad. Yeah, we, we designed a crappy keyboard. And then there was a recall program for it. But this is somewhat rare for Apple that they released these extended warranties. And here's the, the sad part about this. The sad part about this is that nothing's going to change. Because many people are going to ask if they have these issues and they happen over and over and over again, in cases like this, where there is no way to say it's not their fault, it's not AMD made a bad chip and we just had crappy cooling which accelerated the process, it's not, oh, these tech reviewers are purposely bending our phones or any of this. This is an issue with the part that they designed, that they commissioned in their machine, and that it is not occurring with any other machine. The reason that it's going to continue is because nobody's going to care. Somebody's going to go to the Apple store and they're going to hear five to seven hundred dollars to fix an issue that was not their fault. And then rather than do what they would do at almost any other business, which is, let's say, leave them a one-star review or file a chargeback or say, you know what, I am done purchasing your products because they're bad, as I expect people to do at my business if I treat them poorly, they're going to say, thank you, sir. I'll give you 500 to $700 to fix it, sir, and then I'll buy another one. Now, you may think that the free market will solve this problem, that only people who are willing to tolerate this type of treatment will go to Apple and receive this type of treatment and take it in the ass. But the reality is that most companies appear to be copying another company. If you don't agree with me, which company started the trend of even their high-end performance laptops soldering in the RAM when they weren't going for maximum thinness? Which company was the first to start gluing the battery and sealing it into all of their devices even when they were not making them liquid resistant? Which company was the first to do things like remove the headphone jack? Which company is the company that every other company seems to be following and copying when it comes to making these anti-consumer decisions? And how long will it be before every other company decides, hmm, you know what, we're 
we're not just throwing out these ideas half-baked. We're making sure the products are well-engineered and well-designed. We're paying people to make sure these are well-engineered and well-designed. When they have design flaws, we fix them for our customers. Why are we doing that when the near $1 trillion company doesn't have to? Hmm. Apple is giving other companies ideas on how they can lower the standard for technology that we all use. And if you continue to spend money on this, if you say, it's okay, sir, that you screwed me over with this $3,000 machine that doesn't work, I'm going to buy a $4,000 machine from you now. You're not just contributing to Apple be being told effectively that we approve of them making crappy devices and supporting them poorly. You're telling every other company out there that that is the behavior that's rewarded. And that's what scares me is living in a world where there's no place to go, where there's no company that you can go to where the products are made well or well-supported because they've all decided to copy the design and the half-assness of this one company. So it's just something to think about before you go to that store and decide that because you have this flexing issue with your machine that you're going to buy the 2019 model MacBook Pro. If you want dying keyboards and a soldered an SSD and a chip that doesn't allow me to get data off the board when it breaks and no liquid resistance and throttling and... Be in a screen that blinks off, off and on on your $4,000 machine. Be my guest. But I think that we should ask for a little bit more than this from companies who are making flagship level products that cost a fair amount of money. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And as always, I hope you've learned something.